The first tuner Nissan GTR shows up in Japan, Knight Rider is a go, and Aston Martin builds the ultimate moonroof. I'm Aksana Bayou, and this is the, the Fast Lane Deli. That's hilarious. Man. No, I'm just kidding. It's me, Derek D. What's up, guys? Um, it's actually April Fool's Day somewhere in the Mid Midway Islands, so we decided to keep the joke going. So, happy April Fool's Day. Fast Lane Daily is brought to you by Royal Purple, the performance oil that outperforms. With all the talk about the Nissan GTR, you'd think it were as perfect as a car could get. Well, maybe not, says Japan's Amuse Tuning Shop. The company says it's pulled 130 more horsepower from a stock GTR than the 480 on Nissan's spec sheet. That's a total of 610, and they've only made a few strategic tweaks, including a new exhaust system and engine computer mods that increase turbo boost levels. Amuse ran the resulting R35 Phantom on Japan's Tsukuba circuit, where it set a company lap record and proved the GTR is tunable after all. That means we're probably less than a decade away from seeing 1500 horsepower GTRs running on YouTube. Hopefully not driven by the children of professional wrestlers. That'd be bad. NBC says tune in, turn on, and tune out. That's apparently the strategy behind greenlighting the new Knight Rider series for production. Variety reports NBC has ordered the poorly received series for its Friday night time slot. Online hecklers have berated the TV remake of the 80s show for its contrived plotline stilted acting, and blatant advertising play from Ford, casting rival GM products driven by the show's villains. Still, NBC execs say Knight Rider fits in their desire to produce shows that allow viewers to quote, tune in and then mentally tune out. Alan, wake up. I'm up. Come on, we're doing a show here. <laughs> and from the When Body Kits Attack department, check out the latest from Japanese tuner Premier 4509. It's a wide body package for the Bentley Continental GT. The flamboyant kit comes with front and rear bumpers, side skirts, front fenders, and rear quarter panels that increase the Continental's overall width by four inches. The company says the wide body kit will be an exclusive add-on, only 100 will be sold. And according to our calculations, it's 100% too many. Next up, what's on the roof of that Aston Martin? That's in the internet rumor mill, right after Ben Campbell had a gifted mind. We're ready to get $300,000. You think you could beat the system? Come here! Hey, what's up, Alan? Do you know if my, uh, my plane ticket got here yet? How, uh, how am I getting to the airport? The limo? Business class? First class? You know, does my entourage get, like, you know, how many other rooms are available for them? Hair and makeup and, um, you know, personal chef on call. Best Lane Daily goes on the road the week of April 7th. Got a story for Fast Lane Daily? Well, if you do, we want to know about it. Drop us a line at tips at fastlanedaily.com. But if you just can't wait, you can send us an aim at Fast Lane Daily. Got a forum thread you want us to know about? Go to the feed at feed.fastlanedaily.com. You can also vote in the feed for the stories you want to see on tomorrow's show. It works. Where do you think this next story came from? After months of radio silence, the upcoming Aston Martin Rapide showed up alive and well on Germany's Nürburgring this past week. Aston's competitor to the upcoming Porsche Panamera was once left for dead after Ford sold Aston to a UK consortium. But the Rapide is alive and well and currently undergoing late stage testing. But while the prototype is reasonably faithful to the Rapide concept shown at the 2006 Detroit Auto Show, the latest test car has an unexpected feature. That is a full-length glass roof. No word on production plans for the glorified moonroof, but expect to see the first Rapides roll off the line in 2009, possibly even as rolling luxury greenhouses for growing some awesome hydroponic shizit. What up? And finally, the Dodge Viper claims another victim. Imagine being the guy who has to tell his boss that he smashed up a customer's 2008 Dodge Viper with only five miles on it. According to SRTForums.com, an employee of a Southern California Dodge dealership headed back to work after gassing up the Viper. Trouble occurred just an eighth of a mile from the dealership when he lost control of the 600 horsepower Reptile and stacked it into four parked cars. Although the damage was extensive, the car is still not as ugly as this. Gross. Well, that wraps up Fastlane Daily for Wednesday. Tune in tomorrow when we build a body kit for the Bentley Continental GT out of parts we found in the plumbing department of Home Depot. It's gonna be great. <laughs> Seriously, Alan, wake the hell up. Just rude. <laughs>